The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Hope Housing is championing the great Aussie dream for our everyday heroes, police, nurses, paramedics, teachers and more by reinventing the way they buy homes. Hope's shared equity housing model means your clients can now access the property investment returns they've come to love without the hassle of being a landlord and at the same time enabling affordable home ownership for a deserving frontline worker. It's the win-win Australia needs right now. Hello, welcome back to another episode. I've got uh, the man, the myth, the legend, John John Casher on the, on the line here on, on, on the podcast. Financial Standard Power Fifty. We shared the couch last week uh, over the over the road there at the Hyatt. TV star, you, you name it. John's doing it. John, uh, thanks, thanks for thanks for taking some time to chat with me today, mate. How can I how can I follow up that one? Um, geez, that, like that, that's yeah, mate. It's just it sounds like I'm doing a lot. My missus reckons I'm not doing much, so we'll just see. Um, we, but we were on the couch last week, and you know we did a bit of an intro and. You're talking about charity stuff that you're doing, and then you got all fired up about you know financial literacy and education. Uh, I, I spoke yeah. to someone else afterwards, and I said, like rightly, rightly so, you could have yeah. uh, just taken that whole that whole segment uh, from from us there and and run with it. So, yeah, uh, pleasure, I, pleasure to speak with you. Thanks, mate, for having me, and um, you know, I you know for the whole kind of community as well too. You know, it's really good that we've got this kind of platform to be able to you know, listen to advisors and advisors' stories. I know I've been kind of following a lot of people's journey on this, and mate, for you to take the reins as one of the hosts, good on you, Jimmy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good fun. great work. It's good fun. So, so AFA Group Wealth's your financial planning business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I know a little bit of the, the backstory of you know mm. you, you you kind of got into financial advice before you'd even finished high school or something. I think mm. I heard you talk about it probably some other podcast or something that I picked up along the lines. But mm. what's the you know g- give us the the couple minute summary of of your kind of story into financial advice? We're going to get into you know, you're doing a, like a one to many type model at the moment. I really want to pick your brain mm. on that. But what what's the backstory? Let's let's start there. Yeah. So uh, being in the business. Uh, for 15 years next year, which is pretty amazing. Like, um, you know, you kind of, when you're in the business, you don't really reflect on, you know, how long you've been in it. You kind of just wake up every day and kind of keep pushing the dial. Uh, well, that's what I do anyway. And someone said to me, it's like, John, 15 years next year, I think we celebrate. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. So 15 years, um, 20 years in the game though. I started when I was 14 and uh, worked at my cousin's financial advisory practice at CCA Financial Planners, Chris Kasher, um, you know, old risk writer, you know, now now develops the, the business is more comprehensive, but back then it was a risk kind of academy. You know, you learnt, you learnt your best, you know, your best craft back then. And I kind of got to my 20s and I just, I, I've always had this kind of driving thing that I just wanted a little bit more. And I just felt that, you know, what I was kind of getting at that place wasn't fulfilling me. Like that's the, that, that's the honest and went into my business, kind of did what I knew, which was, you know, annual reviews, super insurance, all of that stuff. And to, until about, it was that type of business, I would say until about 2018. Yep. And then a light bulb went off and um, the light bulb was like, Am I just doing what I've just known to do or am I really going to kind of push the dial and do what I think needs to be done? And this is where the whole passion around financial literacy because I know it has such an impact on helping change people's lives if you're starting from the bottom or at the top, doesn't matter where that is. But now we're really offering, I would call it an integration between wealth coaching, financial planning, behavioral coaching, mindset education, there's kind of like this amalgamation of all of it together. And to be honest with you, Jimmy, I don't even know what it's called, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I do have a lot of people that have seen traditional financial planning before come in here and it's like, are you the same occupation? Yeah. And that that's cool. Like I love it because we're obviously innovating and we're doing a lot of things which are, which I believe are value, but there's obviously a lot of people that don't 
want to do what we want to do either. And that's that's cool. We're just probably niching to a very niche market. And I would probably say we're probably 50% coaching and then 50% the other stuff, you know. So, and being able to kind of deliver that, which you kind of talked about just briefly before around, we've had discussions around one to many. It's a lot, it's around like, how can I be in front of all of my clients and all of my advisors' clients as much as possible, coaching them through all of the emotional roller coaster that they go through if it's in regards to investing or the behavioral decision, should we buy that handbag or buy that car or whatever that's going to be? And the only way to do that is through technology um, and being able to be in front of them as much as possible. And I know, Jimmy, you're kind of in my circle of my social media and you kind of get a lot of the stuff that, you know, a lot of the public get, you know, but our clients probably get that times 10, you know, so around like we are daily in their face, Mm. you know, and so when you've got someone guiding you on a daily basis, what kind of impact is that going to have in the results for them to achieve the life that they want? So let's, so you would, if my maths is right, if the kind of this light bulb's gone off in 2018, that's five or so years ago. So you're probably 10 years then in the, in the doing it the way that you knew it up until then. Were, were you just on your own then? Did you have, had you gone into like mortgage? I know you do mortgage broking. Had you yeah. gone into mortgage? Like what, what were you doing in that 10 years? Was it just on your own or did you have other people? What was happening there? Yeah. So it was a, it was a well, quite small team. Um, there was at that point in 2018, I think it was one mortgage broker, me and two other admin at that point. And um, yeah, man, it was normal. And like, if we all go back to like 2018, we were going through some of the, you know, some of the regulation changes then, yeah. you know, this was when stuff started to really kind of start heating up and there was changes to insurance and there was changes to, you know, uh, opt-ins and FDSs and blah, 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 blah. And we were engalling it. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, it, like, what are we doing? Like, there's no value, but not, not, not no, no, not that there's no value. That's probably wrong in saying it. It's just like everything I felt that I was doing was more around compliance and paperwork than actually adding value to our clients. Yeah, okay. And I think that's where the kind of discovery started. And then there was first- yeah. what, what did you do around that? So like a, a light bulb's gone off. Like where, mm. what, what did you do to get from, it's me and my couple of admin people, we've got a mortgage broker, things are going along, business is great, we've got some clients, you know, I'm, I'm sure things are, things are going fine for mm. you. What did you do around like training, education? Like how, how did you – you've had this idea to say we need to do this better. Mm. Where did you go to get the answers or to try and learn how to try and do it better? What did you do? I went through a really traumatic time, man. Yeah. And I, I, I think the biggest thing is what I went to go find was actually myself. Yeah. Yeah, and I know it sounds deep. Yeah, but I, um, I had spinal surgery in 2019. My back was playing up. Um, my son, my first boy, was born in December 2016. We were renovating the house in 2017. You've got to remember, at that time, I grew up from a, a boy to a man, and I found myself, and I found my purpose, and I found who I am. And from that, it was like, okay, well, what, what's my purpose? Who am I? Who am I? I'm the person that wants to change people's lives. Since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, I've always been that person that's tried to help people. If it was the bully in the schoolyard, that wasn't me. I was the guy hanging out with the people who were getting bullied. You know, and that's who I was. I'd always the the minorities that were at school. These were the people who I would actually get friends with because I I know I I felt like they needed that leadership and they needed that care. So I've always had that sense of that empathetic kind of leadership about me. And what I think what happened when I went through some of that traumatic health issues and some of those growing up by becoming a father for the first time and building a house, as you know about, it's not exactly, you know, roses. You, you kind of got all that at the same time. Um, I just said that I'm going to create this business to change people's lives. And whatever I need to do to change people's lives, I know that once I change them, the money will come. And there's been huge learnings. There's been a lot of money spent. There's been a lot of sleepless nights and we're still growing and we're still learning. Um, but the light bulb, I think, came from being in a deep, dark place. Okay. Jimmy? Yes. Height of the Royal Commission as well, too, if you want to throw that on there as well, in 2018. I was licensed by NAB, so that didn't make it any nicer at the time. And, yeah, I probably just found myself and I said, what am I doing? Like, am I doing what's going to impactfully change people? And is that you, John? Yeah. And it was just 
no, that's not the way. So I have to try and find a better way. You seem to have, you seem to well and truly come out the other side of that, like the passion that you have just now recording this when we were sitting on the couch last week, like it's incredible to, um, so you know, credit to you for you've been through, sounds like a bit of a rough patch, a bit of a down, down patch in finding yourself, but you've come out the other side with this huge no, could have a positive attitude and, and, and wanting to help so many people and, and really from the beginning with your financial literacy and so forth. So, big credit to you. We're lucky to have mm. you, I guess. No, well, mate, we're lucky to have you. You're making <laughs> us into super, superstars on, t- on TikTok. Um, but I think the other, other part of that question was around where did I learn? Because yeah. obviously, you have that light bulb and you get to that deep, dark moment. It's around learning. And I think one of the biggest places that I had to look at was outside of our industry. It's like up until that point, I kept on looking in. It was like investment training and insurance training and estate planning and blah, blah. And don't get me wrong, they are all good. And for you to be a financial advisor, you need to know all of them. But if you're going to innovate and change what you're doing, you need to look outside of that. So I'm like, okay, well, who's the best coaches? Hmm. Well, this is when PT was starting to go crazy, F45s, da 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 And I'm like, yeah, I can go with this, yeah? I've always thought to myself, like, we write goals on a fact fine, but do we actually make them come to life in a real sense? Well, let's make that come to life. How can we create this big vision of 10 years or 20 years away, be three months, nine months, 12 months, actionable items? So I had to go outside to PTs to learn from them. Yep. I also need to look at it and go, okay, well, what about, what about like the level of precision we need to have, yeah, in regards to, so it's not just coaching. You can be a little bit loose on that, but we, we're working with people's lifestyles, yeah. So, you know, one of my best friends is a um, he's a doc or consultant doctor, I think they call him at the Royal Melbourne in ER. So he, he, he's literally saving people's lives. So I'd pick his brain and listen to him around the processes and the procedures and the way he goes about every single patient that comes in. And you've got to remember, these patients that come in, they're coming in with major trauma and he's all he's got is about four, two minutes of we've got a patient coming in with this, solve it. So how can you do that under pressure as well too? So you're looking at that precision, how to be under pressure and using that. And then obviously going outside industry, lawyers, accountants, you know, people around and going, okay, well, how can I take the best pieces of all of those and put them in? And then the final pieces was working with neuroscientists and psychologists around the behavior. We all know around if you want to win sport, win a premiership, win a championship, it's 90% above the shoulders. So if we want to, if we want to change our clients' lives, and remember, this is all about our clients now. Yeah, that's just not about the business we're talking about. The money will come. I truly believe that. Like you do the right thing, the money will come. But to change the way they think about creating wealth. This is a mindset and a behavioral problem. So how can I use some neuroscientists and psychologists way of unpacking this and finding what their true money stories are and unraveling that and breaking through invisible ceilings? And that's cool. And then you've got to piece that all together, which we've been trying to do probably for the last maybe three years to get it to where it is now. And we're still, you know, we're still evolving. That's incredible. So what, so what is the what does the team look like now? So five years ago, it was you, a mortgage broker, maybe a couple of other people. What does mm. AFA Group Wealth look like today? I think, I can't remember the exact number. I, honestly, I think we're up there about 18, 19 or something like that. Yeah, yeah there's, the thing is, is that um, a lot of my team is very young, okay? And one of the things that I had to do, and not just because I'm young as in regards to industry like you are, Jimmy, but in regards to what we're doing isn't traditional financial advice. And what I kept having the problem is I kept on hiring people with experience, them coming in and going, this is what I signed up for. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is what I, so I've had to play the long game and hire young. I've, I've got three, I've already had two PYs successfully go through PY already. I've got a third one that's going to finish in January. Um, and then I've got Mason that's with me that's been in the financial advice game for about five years that's been with me for a couple of years. So we've really had to kind of shape them into this, this, this I don't even know, financial Perfect. advisor slash coach slash psychologist, like mash it all together and I don't know what to call ourselves anymore. I think it's my, my biggest thing at the moment. Um, but yeah, and then the, then there's power planning, internal power planning. We've got admin as well too. There's a practice manager. We've got a marketing t- market, like a marketing team as well too. And then there's, there's kind of me, which is the, the BDM 
networker, you know, social activist for financial planning, you know. I met the uh, the uh, person you've got for your marketing there last, last week and we went to the same high school, except I finished, she finished last year and I finished 20 years ago. I had my 20 year reunion <laughs> last year to the same high school. <laughs> Way to make me feel old. <laughs> Well, mate, I've got to learn about things like TikTok and stuff like that. And the younger generation know better than me. I, th- I think I'm fully ingrained in the Facebook world um, and trying to get over there. I just can't do it, but uh, I'll, le- I'll leave you to do that. But no, very young team. Um, but I think the other thing as well, too, is that, you know, you see the vibe that I've got, you know, I'm pretty much passionate and I want people to share that same passion. So <laughs> we we get people that have that right attitude. And, and I think it's a matter of, I don't know what it is. It's maybe it's because uh, some people are set in their ways. I don't know what it is, but you know the people that I've really got are really passionate, and I really am very, very grateful that from the outside they make me look really good. But they're doing amazing things. You know, Jimmy, I, I hardly give advice anymore. I was like, going to ask you, know, you: Are you are you advising yourself anymore? No, no by the sounds of things. Not really, man. Yeah. Like I'll jump in here and there to maintain a relationship or something gets a little bit, you know, kind of complex and requires a little bit of me to jump in there. But, you know, I've got four young advisors that are, yeah, super proud of, man. I feel like, I feel like you know, Miyagi with a few Daniel sons. Yeah, I, I'm having a bit of that moment at the moment. So, how, so, what, so what does a day in the life of one of your advisors look like then? I'm interested, you know, as you said, I, I you know, I'm, I'm Follow your your Instagram page there. You put a bit of family stuff on there, a bit of work stuff on there, uh, mm. and you know that that itself is every day you're putting something out on on your Instagram mm. page, mm. and then you said for the for the clients it's 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 ten times whatever whatever. So so what's what's a client experiencing or what's an advice? Mm. Let me take a look. What's an advisor doing on a day to day basis in your business? Yeah, so. First and foremost, our model is very engaging. So we try and do as much one to one to many as possible. But literally, like ninety five percent of our clients, we will be meeting up with them three to four three to four times a year minimum in a one to one session. And it's around creating mini plans for a big plan, mini plan for a big sale. So it's always around where where we where are we now and where do we need to be in the next three months. And so them coordinating that on. 70, 80, 100 clients, yeah? Remember, the max is going to be much more restricted because we're much more active, yep. yeah? Their diaries fill up very, very quickly. And so it's a matter around they should be, which they're human as well, yeah? Re- delivering advice, strategizing, re- you know, contacting clients, coaching them the way they need to coach. So um, the other aspect around this, Jimmy, from a, from a financial perspective or from a business perspective is my passion to make this affordable as well. Sure. So you got to think about it. You can create the model that's highly engaging, highly responsive, and then everyone's sitting here going, "John, what do you charge? Like three grand yeah, a month to pay yeah. twenty grand a year?" For- <laughs> <laughs> do you get me what I mean? Yeah. And it's not. See, what we're doing is we're utilizing technology, and our average is around five hundred bucks a month. So everyone that's sitting there going, "Oh my gosh, like I charge that for an annual review?" Yeah, it's like well, we're using technology to punch through that because we're like, okay, well, how can we deliver that, remain profitable? Technology is the big winner here. What, what can you talk us about? Talk us about the technology piece. Like, what are you, what is it that you're using and doing it? How you're delivering that? Well, first and foremost, it's around building a process like Macca's. So, sure. if you want to look out in the outside industry, from the day the client signs up on the from the, actually from the first call all the way through, it's just efficiencies, 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 efficient and constantly pushing out. We push out SOAs. I think we push out about 15 a week, Jimmy. Now there's four advisors, two and a half, half power planners. We're about to go three and a half. And people sit there and like, well, John, what the hell are you talking about? Like, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's going through my head. Yeah. <laughs> Process, 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 process. If something's wrong, it doesn't like if we if we've been doing something for the last ten years, does it mean it's right? You got to look at all the ways. And you know, we have a captain of someone who's just captaining efficiencies every single day, looking at something we can do better. If you can do something better every single day, you know, two thousand things improve within a year. You know, like it's you know, oh, sorry, sorry, three hundred and sixty five days a year, you get three hundred and sixty five benefits a year. So it's constantly just small incremental benefits, benefits, benefits times that by, let's say from 2018 to today, mate, trajectory of difference is huge. Um, so that's one thing. And the other big one is just going back to client experience. 
we are literally got our clients to the point where there feels like there's constant dialogue because you know, like you, I don't know, let's do, do a superannuation strategy and then implement it. That doesn't take overnight. There's things that happen, things that roll out. And by the time that's implemented, boop, you're already up for your next session. So from a client experience, it's seamless. So you then got to have the teams that are doing their jobs and their tasks and their responsibilities for you to be able to make that scalable. Yep. So what type of – so the advisors are looking after – how many are they looking after, 60, 70 clients? Is that where you're trying to keep it at? Yeah, sweet, sweet spots around that kind of 70, max 80 clients. Yeah, yep. that's the, that's the sweet spot. Anything more than that and service drops off. Yeah, so we we essentially the, – the biggest thing like most other businesses is around resourcing. Like we've had two – we've got a, one starting on Friday, a power planner, and we've got a, another client services person starting – the month after and we just we feel like we're in constant recruitment because yeah door keeps opening yeah, yeah. so what what does that look like so the you're the you're the face that the the, the marketing thing as you as you kind of commented before your mm. imagine your online uh presence this brings in some, some clients and then other things that you're doing just in you, you being you brings in some clients so so someone reaches out to you mm-hmm. what happens in your process says so, so I'm, I'm following you on hi john i send you a dm on instagram hey john this mm-hmm. is really great i'd really love to meet with you or the team mm-hmm. what happens after that so straight away they go onto a call screening call like most people and then from that screening call then there's a screening session after that screening session then there is a road mapping if people have been following me on instagram that's kind of that you know that trajectory where i make people achieve their life goals and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, and it's you did pretty- some, some mixed plan model, isn't it? You say, if you did this, but then here's my green line of how, how much better off you're going to be. Correct. So then use a strategy session through X tools to kind of maximize that. And they pay for that session, obviously, um, because they're, they're taking up our time to be able to do that. Um, I've been doing most of those until about maybe four months ago, five months ago. Now the advisors are running those sessions as well too, because I was chewing up heap of my, heap of my time. And then, man, we just get cracking, start doing financial plans, start building out roadmaps for the clients, strategizing, sending it back to the back end team. And then they get presented with an SOA, but it's not really a legal document. Yeah. It's a whole like experience that the client has. And so, how can we utilize something in legislation to be an actual meaningful thing? So, it's around, mate, we'll have probably around 12 to 14 strategies per SOA. And with action items and checklists and so when our even our file noting, like our file noting is not a just a compliance tool. We're to look back about where they were last session so that we can figure out where they're at. So it's integrating that coaching element to then deliver the results for our clients. So what what does the SOA look like then? It sounds like it's not a sixty five page PDF or, or printed document that you're sliding across the table. What is you still need to deliver advice in the form of a statement of advice, How? It, what does that experience look like for the clients? Yeah, so it still has all the legal documentation in it. You know, our SOA is probably 100 pages. You know, it's probably bigger. And the way that I kind of explain it to clients and the way that I want to explain it to you, it's around you can go get your house built and you can have engineers and plans that will meet standard. Then you've got engineerings and drawings where there's 3D drawings and there's beautiful architecture so that you can kind of – or, or drawing so you can go in and see how the house will be before it got built. So we're just creating a little bit more of a, an experience where they're like, I can see what the house is going to look like before I actually go off and build it. So I'll break down cash flow because there's obviously different elements, for example. Like in the cash flow section, it's not just like lines and dot points that is like where your money should be. It's graphical to the point where money in bank accounts are tracked and then the advisor in their delivery is around not only what the strategy is, but what we're looking to do over the next 12 months to implement that strategy and also have the metrics of that strategy. Make sense? So it's as much around the coaching and the deliverables as it is about the document as well. And then you're tracking that cash flow thing somehow. What are you using for that? Well, it depends on the client. Okay. Yeah. So if they're uh, if they're very loose, we'll be very strict. Yeah. And we can use things like My Prosperity to track income, da 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 da, or we can set up bank accounts to kind of take money away from them and put them into better areas. 
Um, but in most cases, it's it's not about necessarily tracking the twenty five dollars a week on their grocery bill. Like we don't really care. It's around how much surplus cash flow and how much are they hitting their other goals. You know, how much are they investing? How much are they paying down their debt? And then adding them all up because I constantly say to people like. You know, you can save an extra five grand. Good luck to you. But if you can make an extra fifteen for me, that, that would work even well. So we're really worried about are they are they hitting their overall goals? And usually, the overall goals are lifestyle choices like holidays and stuff, where they able to achieve their lifestyle goals. But also, where we want those metrics in regards to where do we want their debt position to be, where do we want their investment position to be, and where do we want their overall asset position to be in twelve months, because then that matters around how we're tracking towards the ten year, twenty year plan. So then, if you if we stick on this idea of the cash flow, but you're mm. if you're seeing them four times a year, you're saying okay, we're, in three months it needs to look like this, six months it needs to look like that, twelve months it needs to look like that. So then, when the advisors having their meeting, whatever you call it, the meeting mm. with the client, mm-hmm. are they then saying okay, well, in the plan we wanted your your mortgage to be this much, we would, you needed to have this much in this bank account, this much in this bank account, and this much in this bank account. And if you're not tracking it on my prosperity, which you may not be with all of the mm-hmm. clients. You're then saying to them, how much is in these different accounts? That's kind of how granular the advice is engagements get. If it, if, if it has to be, correct. Yeah, and right. each engagement will be different because yeah. this is the other thing. So each week I do training sessions with my, with, my, with my advisors. So I find myself no longer giving advice to my clients. I'm giving advice to my advisors on how to be better coaches yeah, and be better advisors. And Today, for example, there was a client before we had this meeting and I jumped into it and I just wanted to see how things were going. She's a really nice client and I just noticed that she was really humble. She was just really humble. She was like, I'm thankful for where we are. And this is a person that 12 months ago was like, I want to take over the world. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. So really, I didn't care about her cash flow and Mason didn't care about her cash flow. That wasn't the discussion for today. Yeah. The discussion for today was... We sense there's a change of like there's a change in you. Has your vision changed? Has your goal changed? She's like, yeah. She goes, it has. And so we had a whole session on goals and vision and where she wants to be and what it means for her son and certain goals that we wanted to do ten years away are today. So the advisors need to be very maneuverable in regards to what we're talking about because if you miss that cue and you started talking about the $25 that it, she didn't hit on her KPIs, for it, it's going to feel like you missed the cue here, yeah? Like, So it's like any advice relationship, there's a lot of EQ, yeah? And there's a lot of like the advisors are really getting good in picking up on those cues. Um, but at the end of the day, it's around progress. It's really around progress. It's having a marker to say, we wanted you here. If you're not here, why didn't it happen and what can we do next time to improve that? Yeah. So, so it sounds like there's a big part of what the advisors are doing. It's a one-on-one coaching sessions like we're talking about. How, what does what your one-to-many part look like? What, what does that look like? So each week we do Q&A sessions. We do first and foremost, like everyone, they don't know what the questions to ask. So we have a presentation every week that's done in regards to what's going on in the world, what news headlines is what James did on TikTok. Let's unpack it for you. Um, Literally, we are unpacking what's going on in their head to the best of our ability and then dissecting certain topics that we want to dissect and then doing Q&As every week. And is that is that – do you – is that segmented somehow based on the clients that you're working with or it's just you do one thing and it's just everyone, whether you're 65 years everyone. old or 35 years old, everyone has the opportunity to come along. Mm-hmm. You don't do one that's more targeted at 40-year-olds and one that's more relevant to 65-year-olds. It's just everyone. And what, what, what is it, what's your take-up like with people that are, that are coming along each week to that? Um, we get a lot of – we see a lot of people listening and watching later, Yeah. Being able to get that exact time that meets everyone's needs and everyone jump on at the same time is challenging. Yeah, of course. Um, however, we then blast out a recording to all of our clients for them to watch at a later date. And we always get like, we see the click through rates and the click through rates are pretty good in regards to what our expectations like. Um, but the other one as well too, Jimmy, it works as a reference point as well too. So if you're having a conversation with, an, with a client and we were talking about, the risks of debt recycling. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it up there. There's nothing stopping our advisor by going to that video, grabbing it, sending it to the client and saying, listen, watch from minute eight to minute 15. And I just want you to watch that for a second. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's this whole 
back to your process thing, like there's mm. with every client that we engage with, there's certain things that in everyone's standard process you just say it over and over and over again, whether it's a, a risk profiling conversation mm. you have or this thing or that thing or something else. It's just having being able to have that as a recorded version that mm. you can, as he's pointing to, kind of go back to and say, okay, what, watch this thing. I'll explain something to you now, but hey, you should also go and watch this video and watch it between minutes eight and 23 because John did a really good job of explaining it. That's really powerful. And, and around one to many sessions, so we do those weekly, and then we'll have we'll have bigger topic sessions that people want to talk about. The also as well too, things like RBA rate decisions, things like economic updates. Like these guys are getting pounded with value, pounded like one after another. I can have guest speakers, Jimmy. Yeah. You know, come in, speak about this. We want to have I don't know Tara for estate planning, or we want I don't know whatever it is. It's just constant. Yeah, to the point to the point where people, if they turned off the engine, so let's say they turned it off, they would feel like, oh my gosh, like what's missing in my life? Like we want that to be the case, yeah. So I, when clients on board, I say to them, guys, this is your advisor you're going to work with, but I'm just going to prepare you. I am going to be everywhere, and if you think if you think that I'm missing, let me know. Up until this point, Jimmy, no one has ever come to me and said, John, I feel like you're not there. So is that you doing those weekly things? You're doing the weekly sessions? Fantastic. Yeah. Because if you go open it up and say, has anyone got any questions? Mm-hmm. No one ever asks a question to begin with. Mm-hmm. You've, you've covered some particular topic, whatever it is that you're talking about. Do you then find you're getting a couple of questions at the end? Yeah. yeah. So you've always got a couple of questions, but remember that most people don't know what they don't know. Mm. So if you train these, train everyone or educate them week after week after week after week after week after week, mate, they know most of what you're talking about. Yeah, like by week 15, they're just like, this is like information overload. Yeah. So you need to keep it topical. So it's for example, like Gaza and Israel. You try and not get onto the human element of it. There's this atrocity what's going on over there and we don't want to talk about that, but we want to talk about what they would be thinking. They don't know what they're thinking. We t- need to tell them. Hey. And then he's like, oh, my God, is John a mind reader? Like, what's the impact of that on their financial situation? Yeah. So I might just raise it. I know you guys might be thinking this, so I'm just going to call the elephant in the room. Boom. Yeah. Brilliant. That's powerful. So, yeah, it's, it, so, yeah, so the one-to-many the one to many is you being able to, because you know, a lot of people are attracted to working with your business mm. because of your profile. It's how you can keep front you can still keep in front of all of these people without actually having to be the advisor for 350 clients because you can't possibly do that so you have your advisors are doing the the checking in and the coaching and and that you get tapped on the shoulder if there's something that's a little bit tricky and you can come in and and show up but then you do the weekly calls do you, do you then send out an uh, like a, a newsletter as well or does your weekly your every, weekly every week things- they get every every week they get an email from me as well too do you write that? Where does the content come from that? I've got help, yeah, yeah. but um, it's around long game, teaching someone to think and act like me, yeah, yeah, to the point where they send it off for approval, I give them approval and they hit send. Yeah. And is but that, the thing is, Jimmy- is yeah, that, go, then, go. that then has your link to your video that you've recorded in there? Yeah, I'm loving this. And the, and the thing is, Jimmy, that this is, you know what the most exciting thing about it? The most exciting thing about it is if government's listening- why can't I do this to the masses? What is stopping me from, besides the actual financial planning one-on-one, educating the whole of Australia in financial literacy? Do you see where my passion lies? Yeah. All I've done is just guinea pigged it on my business. Don't you and need, so when I- uh, can, you can you get like a publishing license or something? What is it? I don't know. Everyone, financial advisors jump up and down about how does the barefoot investor get away with, I don't know, doing whatever he did in his book. Mm. Isn't this is something like, Publishing could be. exemption or something. I don't know what it is. Someone will tell they, us. There could be. There could. There could be. The thing is, is the thing is, is this just around um, being able to try this and then have enough research and data and results for you to put it in front of a politician so that the politician goes, "Wow, yeah." So you got to think about it. It's like, what's the quantifiable effect of the barefoot investor book on the Australian population? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, where I'm going to be like, nah, well, listen, I've been researching it with hundreds and hundreds of people since 2018. This is the quantifiable data from 2018 to 2025. This is what the data looks like. This is what we've done across the way. This is where they're ticking. I know if I was a politician, I would say, 
Jimmy, can you just tell me how it works? Yeah, and not just how it works. Can you show me the results? Because I'm not going to roll this out a lot across the country if this thing's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's huge. So powerful. So powerful. and it needs to be done because you've got kids. I've got kids. Yeah. yeah. What we do every day, our kids should know. Why do they need to wake up until they're 18, 19, 20 and then get exposed into this world with no financial literacy and then go through all the mistakes and the headaches that all of us have gone through and then pick themselves up in their you know, 40s or 50s and go, oh, yeah, crap, now I've only got 10, 15 yeah, years left. 20 years a bit at most ahead of me and then uh, how do I fix up the mess that I found myself in? Yeah, so my next cohort is around how can I do this for the younger generation. So if you want to know where John's head's at, it's really around – how can I help our kids um, change their trajectory? Um, I've got a six and a half year old and a three and a half year old, and my eldest has been a guinea pig with this financial literacy for the last three and a half years. And mate, some of the things that this kid can say and do, I'm just like quietly as proud as punch. I hopefully ends up with the same trajectory, and it all works out because you know kids they can turn out to whatever. But you know, I am I'm I'm not just trying to make something that. I don't know it, it works on, you know what I mean? I want to prove, I want proof in the pudding before I go out and start saying, Hey guys, I think that we should do this and everyone jump on board. So yeah, man, it's just my passion and finding me and hopefully the money kind of comes as well too, so that I can use some of that to go to some charities that I'm working with. And yeah. Fantastic. I'm sure it's all going to work. It's all going to work here. Like the, the passion that you have, like, I know I get the opportunity to speak to so many people hosting mm. this podcast, but, but very few of them have the same passion that, that you do. And that's going to, taking you a long way already. It's, uh, it's only going to keep taking you further. It's incredible. Let's see how we go, mate. Yep. Let's see how we go. Yep. Thanks for joining me, John. We'll, uh, maybe we'll wrap it up there because I said, as I said before we pressed record, we could probably do three or four different episodes <laughs> with you with all the different things that you've got going on. We'll maybe wrap it up there. Um, yeah. Appreciate you joining me. For, just for anyone that wants to reach out and find some of your stuff, where can uh, where can they find you? For the financial advice community, probably just search up my name on LinkedIn. Hopefully, yeah. the marketing team's done all right there. And uh, on Instagram, just it's my name, John Casher. Um, and I think there's a the on the front of it because the name was taken. So um, I couldn't get the I am John Casher. Um, I was trying to take a leaf out of your book, Jimmy. So I just put put the on the front of it. So we'll see. There I've got we a go. bit of stick. Got a bit of stick from my mates are on that too. One, so they're just like the John Casher. Have a listen to you. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Anyway. You got to do what you got to do. That's it. That's it. Thanks, John. Appreciate chatting with you. Thanks. Appreciate it.